I have a problem. My Minecraft world looks exactly the same as it did four months ago because I decided to build everything underground. But that wasn't really the best idea. Kind of like me quitting my big boy job last February to make Minecraft videos when I had 251 subscribers. Uh, yeah, that actually happened. But this problem is not financial insecurity or anxiety. This is far worse. And it has to do with Deep Slate. You see, Haste 2 has been the only thing holding me together while digging out this underground mega base. But I'm about to start getting into Deep Slate territory, which means I can taste Haste 2 as well as my livelihood goodbye. Or I could just use a bunch of TNT. So today, let's solve that problem and make a creeper farm. But not just any old creeper farm. I have two goals. I want this farm to be a part of my base, and I want it to be looting three base. I spent some time searching around to find where I wanted to actually build this farm, and from there, the first step was to dig a really large hole. And would you look at that, I've already busted into a cave system. You see, mob spawning increases the lower into the world you go, and even more so if those spawn platforms are exposed to the surface. Basically, this is the same idea that I used in my slime farm build a few episodes ago. Things were going great until I ran into a roadblock. Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, there's a flooded cave? Why is there a flooded cave below me? Oh my god, this is not ideal. Now I I could go raid some ocean monuments, but honestly I'm, I'm far too lazy and I don't feel like popping another totem this episode, that'd be three in a row, so I guess we'll just fill this in by hand. So I got to work, removing a layer, filling in a layer, removing a layer, filling in a layer. Honestly, it wasn't all that bad once I got going. And with the water taken care of, it's time to get back to digging. Oh, just kidding, there's a cave here. Ah, a bunch of sneaky guys up here. Not on my watch. Okay, now I can get back to digging. All right, my friends, I am on level 60, and I can't believe how big this hole is. I still have way more to dig, too. While I was digging, I took any opportunity I could to go ahead and light up nearby caves. It definitely slowed me down, but I knew it would save me time in the long run because I would have to do this anyways if I wanted to have good rates on the creeper farm. Ooh, random waterfall. God, I always gotta go in these things and see where they lead. Do you guys do this, too, or is it just like a me problem? Oh, okay, it goes nowhere. Well, that was an unplanned two-hour cave session, but yeah, I better get back to digging. There's Y level 40. And level 20. And finally, level 10. At this point, I was getting into the deep slate level, which meant clearing out this massive hole just got a whole lot harder. So I took a trip out to my old mob farm to AFK for a bit while I went for a bike ride, made some dinner, and also prayed to death that my cats didn't mess with my game while I was gone. And almost two full shulker boxes later, all I need is a lot of sand. Over 10 stacks. Now that might just take us home. Oh my God, this hole is absolutely massive. What in the heck? Now I think we already know the drill here. All right, let's go ahead and test this out. See if it works. I'm on fire. Using the same TNT placement I used in my slime farm video, I was able to go ahead and pretty efficiently start blowing up this chunk. Now, because this area was a little bit smaller and the way the numbers worked out, I couldn't quite blow everything up to the edge, so I had to do some extra mining. Well, I might regret this. I'm gonna point that out right now. This might be a bad idea. Oh my lord, I've released the army. Dude, what? There are so many of these things. Goodness. Eventually, though, I found a TNT configuration that allowed me to explode things pretty efficiently, albeit a little bit dangerous. Oh, not good. We're fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine.
And finally, my friends, after honestly less than an hour and way less TNT than I thought I would need, we have made it to the bedrock. After filling in a couple of layers at the bottom to give myself space to work, it was time to start preparing things for this farm. I started things off by fishing in this questionable and probably illegal pond. Don't tell anybody though. From there, I set off, fish in hand to find some cats. I remembered finding a cat in the museum area a few episodes back, but they must have died. So I flew off to find some villages. The first village had nothing. Same with the second village. This one was on water though, so I should have known better than to think a cat would be here. After finding more prisoner, I, I mean allays, as well as the ruined portal with two golden apples, I wandered to the third village, which you guessed it, had nothing. The fourth village I stopped at was previously decimated from the raid I did a while back. I mean, there were barely any villagers here, but I did find this random cookie on the ground. Seriously though, does anyone know why the heck this was even here? Anyways, after making my way to the fifth village, I finally found some cats. And they were cute cats, two of which actually looked like my cats in real life. I tamed three of them and headed home. And when I got home, I attempted to lure them into my large hole, but I forgot that orange cats don't actually have brain cells. So instead, I just let this one sit in the grassy area. The key is to make them think they're helping. Luckily for me though, the other two just yeeted themselves right into the hole with me, and that's how I knew they were ride or die. And after spending the next 45 minutes breeding them up, I was ready to continue with the farm. And now I want to get started on the actual spawn platforms, but first I need a lot of materials, mainly a bunch of stone bricks and then a bunch of trap doors. I will use the tree farm for these because I am lazy. Firstly, the ceiling of each of these spawn platforms is covered in trap doors. This makes it so skeletons and zombies can't spawn. Next, it was time to go through with carpets and a configuration that blocks spiders from spawning, which is pretty straightforward. You see, they need a 3x3 area to be able to spawn. Now, the spawn platform design itself is by Logical Geek Boy. I mean, it's pretty much the most straightforward and efficient design out there. There's no real reason to build anything else. And I wanted this farm to produce a lot of creepers when it was finished. And I knew to do that, I would need quite a few spawn layers. I kept building up layer by layer until I had 15 of them, and I figured that would be more than enough for what I would need. There we go, 15 layers have been built on this creeper farm. And now it's time to dig out these openings on each side, which is where the creepers will actually walk off the edge. All right, with each of the sides fully dug out, I think the next thing to do is go ahead and get these cats in place because honestly, they are just driving me crazy. Getting the first cat in place was pretty easy, but moving the other 14 was quite difficult. You see, when cats teleport vertically, it isn't the most accurate, so it was basically a shot in the dark for where they would end up, which was fine at first, but eventually I had to start digging long tunnels so the cats would teleport to the correct layer. But finally, after about 45 minutes of scrambling, the cats were all in place. And with the cats finally in place, I just have to go through and put some trapdoors on each side. Technically, I could remove the torches and add a kill chamber below the farm and I would have easy access to gunpowder now, but that's boring. Instead, I want to collect creepers at a single place and use looting three to kill them because that is just way more fun. I also want to change things up and build on the surface for a change. I'm imagining making a giant castle on the hill that I shoot the creepers out of. Now, let it be known that I have never built anything resembling a castle in my life, therefore I was terrified. Luckily for me, my friend Blockdown messaged me on Twitter to reach out and help and told me that his biggest tip was to not make the castle too large when starting out. Looking to Pinterest for some inspiration, I spent a good few hours just looking at castles that I like so I could use them to help me build. In the end, I was between two different concepts, and after completely ignoring all of Blockdown's advice about scale and failing miserably at designing the first castle, I scaled things down a little bit and made a design that I'm super proud of. But what good is a castle design without the materials to build it?
Luckily for me, I used a mod called Light Matica, which gave me accurate counts of how much of each thing I needed. I spent the next three hours collecting loads of things to build this castle, including deep slate, spruce wood, green wool, green concrete, and so much more. With the materials all collected, I had to determine where to actually build the castle. And you see, the placement here actually mattered a lot, because I wanted to bring the creepers up into the castle and then funnel them along a water stream and then shoot them out the front back into the hole. To start things off, I began laying out a large flat area with dirt that the castle would sit upon. It did look pretty weird right now, but I'll fix that part later. The next task was going through with stone and building up the hillside to meet the large flat area. With the bulk of it built up, I went back through with more stone to add a more natural shape to the cliffside, and finally after blending in the landscape with more grass, moss, mossy cobblestone, and leaves, I was quite happy with how things turned out. But enough rambling, let's build this castle. Well, you guys, I tell you what, it isn't much I've seen better, but oh my god, I am actually so in love with this thing. Like, just walking around down here and seeing the view, it actually made me tear up a minute ago. I was actually, like, crying a little bit. I'm so proud of myself, honestly. But now I want to go ahead and continue the build and actually build a sort of creeper graveyard thing out front here. I think that'll look really good. Going through, I added in some custom gravestones around the hole and then blended the whole thing into the terrain. And with the castle and the graveyard complete and looking mighty fine, I might add, it's time to finish up the actual creeper farm because that is the whole point of this video, believe it or not. Now I wanna funnel the creepers up into the castle and then shoot them out of the top. I think we'll go ahead and dig down right here and right here, that should be good. From there, I began working on the redstone contraption to launch the creepers out into the hole. Now, this was inspired by an old Tango Tech build. And after that, I built up the water streams on both sides to funnel the creepers into the middle. Doing the math to figure out which Y level I needed to stand at, I began building up a large platform of slabs to collect the creepers from above and funnel them to one singular location. And finally, my friends, after many hours of planning, it was time to turn on the farm. Going through layer by layer, I removed the torches, and from there, I just had to wait and see see what spawn. Yeah, just kidding, it sucked. I think in the 10 minutes that I sat here, I had no more than a single creeper make its way down to me. The good news was that the farm worked. The bad news was that it worked very poorly. The reality was that I still had tons of work to do before this farm would actually work at a reasonable rate. So yeah, the creeper farm, it really sucks. But luckily, it doesn't have to. First thing to do, I want to add another side, a third side for the creepers to jump off of the edge. I think they're getting caught up in here a little bit. Which, of course, will require a lot more trapdoors. Next, to add some more trapdoors along the bottom layers, because the creepers from the top layers were falling and then taking fall damage on the trapdoors and dying, I, I should have just followed the tutorial better. I spent the next while adding the finishing touches to the farm, including the third waterway as well as moving the cats out of the minecart because it seemed like the creepers were having a hard time seeing them. I also went through and made some changes to the killing chamber. Despite the rates improving a little bit, I realized that the creepers were actually getting jammed up in the castle and occasionally despawning, which was not good. So instead, I left one of the water tunnels connected up to the castle, but rerouted the other two tunnels to output right near the kill chamber, which would drastically improve the rates but still give me the the satisfaction of shooting creepers out of my castle because that's really important to me right now. Even though the farm was finally complete, I still had to do the most important step. You see, so many caves surrounding the farm were unlit, meaning mobs were spawning there instead of inside of my creeper farm. So going ahead and using a mod called Mini HUD, I set a sphere of 128 blocks around the AFK spot and then started lighting up caves. The numbers that you see on the ground tell me what the light level is, so if it's red, that basically means I need to put a torch there. As per usual, if me using this mod bothers you, I don't care.
After a full hour of caving, I stopped back at the creeper farm to find it basically non-functional, which basically meant that I still had a lot of work to do. So back into the caves I went. Believe it or not, the hardest part was actually finding caves to light up. Even though there are caves basically everywhere underground now, I had to get as many of them lit up as possible. Even a couple dark spots could render this farm nearly useless. I also went through and lit up the surface so I could use this farm at nighttime as well. It felt like no matter what I did, there was another dark cave to be lit around the corner. But finally, after nearly three straight hours in the caves, I started to see some pretty insane raids back at the creeper farm. And there you go, my friends. This project was a ton of fun and honestly I totally overcomplicated the whole thing but I guess that's kind of the point but hey at least I have gunpowder now